I want to move uh, just for the, the final section of this to Turkey. Um, protests there are ongoing. Uh, and I'm curious, just, uh, just for our listeners, what, what was the kind of impetus behind the protest? What launched them? Uh, and, what, and what was the sort of initial response of the uh, Turkish government? Well, the initial uh, um, protest was about a park in uh, the European part of, of Istanbul. Uh, it was green, and the treaties were 70 years old. And uh, the current government in Turkey is more or less a new, neoliberal government. That is to say, it, uh, it values uh, the market as a way of getting social work done. Right. And so plans were made to turn that uh, nice green park into uh, a mall. You know, it would be like putting the Mall of America in Central Park in New York. Uh, not, not exactly on that scale, but that's just to give you an idea of what was going on. So there were people uh, who, who were attached to that green space. And the area around it, by the way, is a kind of bohemia. It's, yeah. uh, it's a kind of place where people gather in the evening to sit at cafes and drink beer and their, uh, their uh, nightclubs and uh, uh, tea houses where folk music is played. Uh, so it, it's, it's a kind of counterculture, uh, bohemia kind of atmosphere. There's also retail. <laughs> it's all mixed up together. So, uh, but, but I think people, uh, in part, were not only protesting against those uh, trees being torn down and the green space going away, but they were protesting that it was being done by fiat from the prime minister's office, uh, and they were protesting against a general sense of regimentation, of, of police brutality, of being pushed around uh, by central government, which is not new with this government. Uh, right. The the uh, the AKP uh, government that's in power now uh, is is not very different from its predecessor in those regards. Uh, but but there's a you know there's a growing uh, middle class in in Turkey, educated, uh, hooked in with the world, uh, who just minds that kind of regimentation, and so. Uh, that that was part of what was being protested. Yeah, so it's interesting to me, uh, you know, in terms of Turkey, because basically, in my understanding of the Turkish context, is that the AKP government came into power, I believe, in 2003. Uh, and this was, I think, yes, it's a neoliberal party. It's also, uh, it's an Islamic party, but I, I would say it's much more, uh, it's better to think of it in terms of maybe like, uh, uh, Christian Republicans in the United States, much more analogous to that than something like, uh, well, certainly than something like Saudi Arabia or another kind of very extreme, it's a religious party or a religious government. It's not like that at all. But there is this certain religious conservatism and market focus uh, in the party. And it seemed that the opposition to them for a long time in Turkey came from kind of remnants of the older secular order uh, which probably had some legitimate criticisms, but didn't have a great democratic record itself and kind of resented being usurped. But it seems like what's happening now, there's an environmental component to this. There's an emerging middle class component to this. There's a broader kind of more genuine liberal thing happening. That's been my read on it. Is, is that a fair read? Oh, yeah. I think it's a very canny analysis. Uh, I think once once the government pushed back so harshly against the protesters over the park issue uh, that it, it set the young people's nerves on edge. Now, one thing to say is that the people involved in the protests are young. These are 20-somethings for the most part, right? And a lot of them were, were just kids when this government came to power. It, it's been elected three times. It came to power first in 2002. And uh, so uh, they've grown up with it, and, uh, and some of them are, are, are tired of it. But they're tired of, um, of the regimentation. And, uh, you know, the soccer uh, fans uh, in Turkey are kind of rowdy. And a lot of them are, you know, uh, not, uh, they're not religious people, let us say. Uh, and so although they might not be committed secularists, uh, they, they mind the religious tinge. And, and the government in Turkey, although it has origins in, in Muslim movements, it's most, most of its policies have, been, have not been particularly religious. They have been conservative. 
So, but recently, uh, uh, the prime minister announced that you couldn't couldn't buy beer after ten. There would be a, an early last call. Oh. Well, you know, there are a lot of countries where you can't uh, you can't order after eleven. So it it it's not uh, the end of the world, maybe. But uh, but a lot of the young people, you know, took it as a symbol that there's this starting to, because this, this, uh, alcohol is forbidden in Islam, and maybe this is the beginning of of, of that kind of regimentation or. And, and, you know, they put restrictions on abortion. Just uh, I think the analogy you made to the religious right uh, in the United States is, is very apt. Uh, so, it's yeah, as you say, it's nothing like uh, Saudi Arabia or Iran or anything like that. It's a secular country. It's got a secular constitution. And the party, you know, is, is, hasn't really pushed Islamic issues. But at the margins, it, it's pushed, you know, kind of social conservatism. So a lot of the young people are pushing it back against that. And then uh, once the crackdown began, uh, some of the labor unions joined in and announced uh, strikes. Uh, and the labor unions in, in Turkey are very weak. They were destroyed by the old uh, secular mil- uh, military government, uh, but they still are there as you know weak shadows of their former selves. And so they seem to be galvanized by this, and and they're they're mobilizing again against the um, the neoliberal. Uh, emphasis of the government of of you know it, it's it's encouraged uh, real estate speculation the property keeps getting high people can't afford to keep their apartments uh there's all these uh, new buildings going up in malls and you know in some ways it's progress but it it, it has victims right and it's a, and there is this neoliberal flavor and i guess i'm what i'm curious about and i know you have to be obviously one has to be very careful in kind of drawing these sort of comparisons uh, and and the movements, uh, you know, I, I, obviously in a place like Egypt are radically different than something like Occupy uh, and are different than something uh, that's going on in Turkey. But I think what's interesting that's happening now is it, it seems to me that this is the first type of movement that we've seen in what maybe could be called a second world country or a, you know, a, a developing and growing uh, place uh, that's not quite conventionally first world yet, or however we want to use those terms. But there is this kind of heavy uh, backlash in some respects towards a neoliberalism in Turkey. And do you think that that, it's obviously specific to the Turkish uh, situation, but is that connected with currents in Europe and the rest of the Middle East? Does it say something broader beyond the Turkish situation? Well, I think that, you know, we, we, we could now start talking about a whole string of uh, youth uh, anti-neoliberalism movements. Uh, there was one in Israel right. uh, in, the, in the summer of, of uh, uh, 2011, yeah. uh, and it was about apartment rents for young people to some extent, uh, and it had a great success. Uh, it was one of the most important recent Israeli social movements. The indignados, the indignant ones in, uh, in Spain, you know, have some similarities. Right. Uh, and and they uh, also were protesting neoliberalism, and especially the way you know ne- neoliberalism is very much implicated in the real estate uh, collapse and the economic collapse in Spain. Uh, even though many of those policies were pursued by by a, a, um, a socialist government, uh, the, the policies themselves uh, were were somewhat neoliberal. Right. And so. Um, uh, I, in Chile, uh, you, you've had uh, huge uh, demonstrations. Uh, the, the the government was was headed by a, a billionaire and, and wanted to raise to raise the fees for education. And the students came back and said, "We well, know we want free education." I mean, that's <laughs> a, a a typical neoliberal uh, kind of move on the government's part to 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 have education be a market right in which right. people would pay for the certification as middle class people, so as to raise their uh, incomes in life, and uh, and the young people were, were arguing that no education is like water; it's a public good; it should be free. And and there's just been enormous uh, uh, student demonstrations in Chile, uh, Colombia as well. So I mean, these things don't get a lot of press because uh, uh, they they don't seem obviously connected to to one another. And while they can be quite large and and quite significant uh, uh, domestically, they don't seem to have a lot of international uh, resonances. But I, I think. Since 2008, uh, there have been fair numbers of these things, and that Turkey's has many similarities to the others. Oh, that's fascinating. And I, I, the final question on, on Turkey, do you think, it seems to me, you know, Prime Minister Erdogan, uh, you know, I've heard him compared to a Turkish George W. Bush. He's very uh, confident. He's, he's, well, unlike Bush, he did win genuine large election victories. Uh, but his response has been to call the protesters uh, uh, vandals, hooligans, be pretty dismissive 
other ministers in his government have actually taken a much more conciliatory uh, tone. Do you think that that's good cop, bad cop, or is there a genuine uh, possibility of some uh, different instincts inside the AKP, uh, AK, AKP government, and how uh, do you think this might all sort of turn out? Oh, I think the the uh, AKP government is very internally divided, and that er- Erdogan has a particular point of view on things coming from his own biography. Right. You know, he was once put in jail by the old secular military government for reading a poem. Mm. And the poem likened uh, minarets to spears. Yes. Uh, so the government charged him with terrorism and put him in jail. Right. And, uh, you know, if, if you were a kind of a religious and observant Muslim in Turkey under the secu- secular military government, uh, you were not a happy camper. Uh, you, you know, girls couldn't go on college campuses or in public buildings with a, with a veil. Uh, and uh, pe- people were, you know, there, it wasn't like American secularism, which when the government's supposed to be neutral towards religious movements, it was like the French, where the government considered it religion to be like smoking, you know, it's, it's, it's a public health problem that should be discouraged. And uh, so he, he fought all his life against this, uh, what he saw as religious discrimination, uh, and when he finally got into power and, and he won all these elections, he got real pushback. There was danger of a military coup from the secularists. So he thinks, as far as I can tell from his speeches, that the old secular party, the Republican People's Party, is secretly behind these uh, demonstrations, that they're, that they're, they're manifestations of a political plot against him to undo the results of democratic free and fair elections. That, that this, is, uh, this is just a, a kind of coup by protest. Right. Uh, and that's why he says things like, well, we'll teach them real politics, and about seven months we'll have elections, and I'll, I'll beat the pants off them again. Uh, and so uh, I think he doesn't understand what's going on. He doesn't understand this is a youth movement. He doesn't understand why people would be upset about progress, like a new mall instead of these old trees. Uh, so it's, it's just his blinders, I think. Right. But I guess to be fair, he does have a pretty unique political biography and some genuine accomplishments to his credit. And unfortunately, he can't uh, stay current and, and kind of anticipate what's, what's going on now, maybe because of those blinders, as you say. Uh, Professor Cole, thank you so much for your time. <laughs>